Virtual reality is a little bit like a, like a spotlight. The uh, experience of uh, the mind sort of being in this environment when it's uh, immersed in this sort of peaceful, positive environment. It's almost like the rest of your experiences are unable to be noticed. Because it recruits so much of the brain to focus on that spotlight that everything outside of that environment fall to the wayside during that experience of virtual reality. Cedar sinai here in LA is one of a handful of hospitals experimenting with a surprising new treatment for people suffering acute pain. I wonder if we could start by asking how long you've been here at Cedar sinai and um, what brought you here, please? Um, I've been here for about four days now yeah. uh, from uh, chronic uh, back pain. Okay. Uh, I'm just taking some medications and uh, uh, possibly an epidural very soon. I'm in the hospital because I have a total artificial heart and last week it had a failure. I've been on hard medication for pain for five years and I'm really trying to get off of it. So I'm constantly having pain up my left upper quadrant and my right uh, lower quadrant it goes into my back. I can't relax. I have had every test possible. If there was a surgery, I'd do it today. Chronic pain is more than just the physical experience, but it's the biopsychosocial experience. And virtual reality has a way of affecting people physically, emotionally, uh, and to some degree even socially. Uh, I'm excited to, to try something different, something new. Hey. Hey. All right. You ready? Yeah. Every time they send us a new one, it's a little bit lighter. So you want to go to Iceland? We'll try that? Let's do that, yeah. Are you afraid of heights? I'm not. Oh, perfect. Take a second for it to start. Virtual reality undoubtedly has an effect on the human mind. Uh, it sort of hijacks the brain. It can be used for, for evil, but it can also be used for good. What are you seeing? It was like ice formations. It, it makes you feel like you can grab them. You know, honestly, in the 18 years I've been practicing medicine, I can't think of anything that I've done that's more effective. And you can physically see their body language change. Um, they often will look straight ahead like they're looking at a still image. The moment that they turn their head, that's sort of the magical moment. It's, it literally is like total panoramic. 360. Yeah. VR's backers say that at the very least it does no harm, and it's got the potential to cut down on the need for drugs like morphine, make patients more relaxed, and even have them wanting to go home sooner. Would this be something you might reach to before, let's say, morphine? I'm sure that I'll probably try this first, followed by the... Uh, the rest of the stuff. Right, right. That was, I, in a million years, I never would have thought that they would have brought it to a hospital to use. It really felt like I was there. Yeah. And this helps me relax. And when the muscles relax, the pain goes away. VR seems to take patients out of their pain, at least for a while. But it also seems to take them out of the confines of their hospital beds while they have the headsets on. For those trapped by their conditions for long periods, that may be a welcome relief and help mitigate some of the stress of being in hospital. You know, it's kind of like a jail cell, really. I can get out, I can go around, and I can walk and everything else, but you still end up in this four by 10 room. We need a virtual reality pharmacy, a shelves, so to speak, of VR content that's evidence-based and that I can reach off the shelf and map to my patient's needs. And the more of that that we have, the broader the opportunities we have to engage patients with virtual reality. This is not uh, about Silicon Valley entrepreneurism. It's about when and whether we should interact technology with the compelling human experience of being a patient. It's not a computing science, it's not an engineering science, it's a social science.